Greetings Pen Pals. We have a little bit of a different pen here today. This is the Caveco Sport Neon Yellow Highlighter Pen. So let's get right to it. This is a different type of pen. This is a small plastic pen, only weighs 10 grams, and it is a small pen. It is pocket pen size. It is the same size and form factor as, let's say, the Caveco AL Sport, but of course this pen's aluminum, much heavier. This pen is plastic. So like I said, we're talking small size pocket pen here. Here it is compared to a Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan, as you can see, much, much smaller pen. So yes, we're talking small, light pocket pen size, but the size is not what makes this pen special. This pen is designed really specifically with highlighting in mind and not like normal everyday writing. We'll get to that in a minute. It is a um, this cool neon yellow color on the cap. The barrel is transparent for a reason which I think I'll get I'll get to in a minute, which I'm going to guess. And the section is also this nice neon yellow color. It's meant to take uh, neon yellow highlighter uh, cartridges, which are included. And we'll get to that when we go over the packaging of the pen. Um, I suspect that if they made the whole body neon yellow, it might be a little difficult to tell your ink level. And that is, I think, why they they did that. Um, the um, the uh, pen itself is... Um, has on the cap, it has Caveco Sport in uh, metallic embossing. And then on the end of the pen, it's got a Caveco logo set in a metal medallion, um, identically to the way it is on the Caveco AL Sport, for uh, example. Um, it is a screw to uncap and it takes one and one eighth turns to unscrew. And this is a tiny pen and you're definitely gonna wanna post this thing because this is just way too small unposted and it's uh it's okay length posted but uh it's it's a small small pen the threads are not obtrusive they are comfortable the section is a small section um, but it's cool because it matches this sort of neon yellow um uh, color now um don't have to really worry too much about comfort this is a highlighting pen you're going to be using this for a few seconds at a time you're not going to be doing an extensive amount of writing with this so uh, you know the comfort aspects i think are kind of secondary um the um, the nib is a um, 1.9 millimeter stub. It has uh, it's a steel nib. It has the Caveco logo. It says 1.9. It has some scroll work. It says Germany since uh, 1883, uh, and it has a normal uninspiring plastic feed. But it does have the Caveco logo on it. Uh, let me say right off the bat, and I'll say this once, and I'm not going to dwell on it for this video. This nib wrote very poorly when I first got it. It just, just the flow was bad. It just broke really badly. I did have to work on this nib. So what I had, what I had to do for mine, and if you were to get this, your nib might be very different, but I had to uh, floss between the tines. I had to open up the tine gap a, a bit, and then I had to um, smooth it a bit. And, and now it works pretty well, um, but it, out of the box, this was almost non-functioning. So I'm going to say that right out of the gate. But again, uh, every nib might be different. If you were to get this pen, you may not have the same experience, but you very well might. So I'm going to fair warning to uh, to everybody. In terms of filling, this pen is cartridge converter. I say cartridge converter. It doesn't come with a converter, but it does come with cartridges. If you wanted to con use it with bottled ink, you would have to get a like a mini converter, like this Caveco mini converter that I have in the AL Sport. That is not included, and you would need to acquire that um, uh, uh, separately. But it is really designed to use with these specific uh, cartridges. But we'll get to that in a minute when we go over the packaging. Um, like I, uh, like I said, so, um, that is, um, um, oh, one other thing that's worth pointing out, the cap does have this nice cap liner here, which appears to do a pretty good job of sealing off, uh, the nib and keeping it fresh because the whole point of a highlighter is a highlighter could sit on your desk for quite a while between uses. And then when you pull it out, you need to be writing first time every time. Um, it's the same experience, frankly, I've had with this um, a AL Sport pen. This is a pretty much a first time, every time writer as well. So the, the whole sort of pocket pen thing, Kaveco kind of has that, has that down. Um, uh, let's uh, take a little detour and talk about how this pen is packaged because the packaging on this pen is quite nice. 
Okay, it comes in this nice box, which is a nice neon yellow color to match the pen. So the theme is uh, working quite nice. You slide this out and you get this really, really, really nice looking uh, tin here, which I think just looks just looks great. Um, uh, and it's got uh, the uh, details of Kaveco's uh, uh, business address in Germany, etc. But a really, really nice tin. You open up the tin and you have a little booklet. It's not really much of an instruction booklet. It talks about the history of Kaveco and stuff like that, but doesn't really provide much in the way of instructions. Does um, give you this nice little metallic sticker, which is cool. Um, the pen comes in this little bag uh, nestled here, and then it comes with uh, a box of cartridges. It actually comes with seven cartridges. It comes with this full box of six cartridges, and um, comes with one cartridge in the pen re uh, ready to, uh, to, to go once you uh, puncture it. Uh, these are short standard internationals. Um, uh, you have a couple of options. If you want to keep using this as a highlighter, you can keep buying... Uh, either from Kaveco or maybe even from another vendor, uh, highlighter ink cartridges, or you could get a converter or, and use bottled highlighter ink, or you can refill these cartridges with uh, highlighter ink, or you probably could eyedropper this pen. Not something I'd probably be interested in doing, but, but you definitely, uh, it does look like a pen you could probably, um, probably eyedropper. So that's, um, that's how the packaging on this goes. Um, but of course, as we always say, pens were meant to write, and I'm quite sure you want to see how this writes, and I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, this, um, this you know, as a highlighter, this functions actually quite, quite well. It kind of basically gets the job done. You're dealing with a very, very stubby pen, a 1.9 millimeter stub, as we say. So this is definitely getting the job done. Um, uh, in this respect, um, but I, I will say, I know I said I wasn't going to repeat this, but I'm going to repeat it. This did not write like this when I first got it. It was really, um, it, it was quite a poor writer, but um, uh, a little bit of nib tuning uh, fixed it up. But if you're not inclined to do that, uh, you may, you do run the risk of getting a dud nib like, uh, like I did. But this is interesting, but in terms of how, if you want to use a fountain pen based highlighter. How practical is it really? So what I thought I would do is um, show you uh, how this highlighter would work on top of some other inks and pens that you might be highlighting on top of. So um, here, I, what I did was I did a bunch of writing samples with various sort of, to be honest, a pretty random selection of of uh, fountain pen inks, and we're just going to see how this uh, uh, function, how these, we'll see kind of a couple of things. We'll see how these inks hold up on, um, on, uh, under, under a highlighter, and uh, we'll furthermore get to, um, uh, you know, see a little bit more of how this works. So Waterman's Intense Black did not hold up well, but I kind of expected that. That is a washable ink. Uh, Heart of Darkness is not perfect. It is smearing a tiny bit, but obviously doing much, much better. By the way, I did this a while ago, so always had thoroughly time to dry, so drying is not an issue here. Uh, Pelican Blue Black uh, seems to be doing okay, not great. There is a little bit of uh, smearing uh, uh, going on there. Uh, Noodle is Apache Sunset is actually doing... Uh, well, which is a little bit surprising because Apache Sunset tends to smear under kind of normal circumstances. Uh, Mont Blanc Irish Green not doing well at all. That is uh, that is really smearing um, quite a bit. Roshizuku Ama Iru. Um, it is smearing a bit, but it is, you know I I I I say I'd give that a, a fair rating. Pelican Edelstein Star Ruby um, again not doing uh, not doing particularly uh, particularly well from a smearing perspective. Uh, Twisby uh, Royal uh, Purple um, smearing a bit, um, not the worst, not the best. Um, Noodler's Dragon's Napalm um, is smearing a little bit, but on the whole holding up, I would say. Um, Noodler's Black Swan in English Roses, uh, that seems to, uh, be smearing a bit. Again, not totally surprising that ink does smear even under 
normal circumstances. J. Herban Emerald of Chavor is just a complete mess, but again, you know, uh, who's really going to be highlighting on top of that? Um, Colorverse Coffee Break, um, uh, not too bad. I mean, it's, it's, it's not, not too bad at all. Um, okay, now we're going to do two inks that are sort of advertised as being permanent inks. So we have Colorverse Permanent Photo Black, um, and that's um, living up to its name. That is not budging, which is really nice to see. And then we have uh, one, which is Noodler Socrates, which Noodler's Mark is as an eternal ink, which... Um, also is not budging at all, which is also good to see. So basically the inks that sort of advertise the fact that they're permanent definitely are behaving uh, as such. And the ones that advertise that they are washable clearly are behaving as such and everything else is pretty much in between as you'd expect. Now, let's do a few that are non-fountain pens because clearly you probably would be highlighting uh, likely on top of some other uh, types of writing. So um, I did those as well. And, and I identified these by the refill, not by the pen, because obviously the pen doesn't matter. It's all about the refill. So we have a Schneider Slide XB uh, ballpoint refill, which uh, seems to be holding up quite nicely. We have a Parker Quink Flow ballpoint refill, which is holding up quite nicely. We have the Schmidt P950 uh, pressurized ballpoint refill. This is an interesting pen, by the way, uh, refill, by the way. This is a uh, Parker style refill, but it's pressurized like a um, like a Fisher Space Pen. So uh, that is uh, holding up well. We have um, the Bic Click ballpoint, sort of your cheapo generic throwaway Bic Click, that's doing well. And a Bolograph, uh, which is a Swedish uh, made uh, ballpoint refill, doing as well. So the ballpoints all seem to really be uh, 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 to the last man here, uh, holding up quite well. Let's uh, get, move to some rollerballs now. We have a Schmidt rollerball, um, not unsurprisingly uh, uh, sh uh, smearing a, uh, a decent amount. A Pilot High Tech Point. Uh, rollerball um, uh, is uh, is also smearing, uh, although you know not su super bad. Um, then we have a Pilot G2 rollerball uh, that actually is holding up quite well. Um, not perfect, but considerably better than the other rollerballs. Um, and then we have uh, next up is a Monteverde uh, gel refill, um, and wow, that's that's not doing well at all. That's smearing quite a bit, but again. Not totally unsurprising. Uh, last but not least, just for completeness sake, we threw a couple of pencils in there. We have a black wing, a Palomino pencil, and a Pentel um, uh, 0 0.7 millimeter type 2B pencil lead. And not unsurprisingly, they held up fine. So this is basically um, kind of uh, an indication as to, you know, sort of the utility of this and how useful this is as a as a highlighter. So um, that's, uh, that is uh, that. Um, now let's talk about another alternative. This is $35. If you want a refillable highlighter, I think there might be a, another way to go, which might be better. And that's as follows. You get yourself a platinum preppy fountain pen. You get yourself some of these uh, highlighter tips for the Platinum Preppy. Um, you remove the f fountain pen nib. You replace them with one of these tips. You then eyedropper fill this uh, pen with hi bottled highlighter ink. And you ha now have a refillable highlighter. Um, or you could skip all that and just buy a Platinum Preppy highlighter, which just costs less than $3 and, uh, and highlight it. Either way you go, you'll end up with something really nice. So this is a Platinum Preppy that's been eyedropper filled um, with the highlighter tip, and it works really, really, really well. Uh, you have a couple of choices in highlighter ink out there. Uh, you could use an ink that's specifically designed as a highlighter ink. So in my case, I'm using Noodler's Firefly, which is this highlighter ink. Um, the Noodler's Firefly is surprisingly close to this Kaweco uh, highlighter ink. So here is the Noodler's Firefly. Here is the Kaweco ink. They, they're really, really virtually um, identical uh, to each other. So they're very, very similar. Um, and um, 
this works uh, really well as well. You get uh, the nice highlighter tip and uh, it works. And when if that, that porous point felt tip where it wears out, you could just simply replace the tip, but that you'll get a lot of mileage out of that. And obviously it's gonna hold a ton of highlighter ink, which is uh, really cool. So I personally think if you really want a refillable highlighter, this is a, a probably a, certainly a more economical way to go. This is neat if you really, really want to use a fountain pen uh, nib for highlighting, um, etc. But, you know, like I said, um, I think this might be a, a slightly better and more economical alternative. In terms of alternative highlighter inks, like I said, you could use uh, an ink like that's, that's made specifically for highlighting, like this Newless Firefly, or you could use other inks that will work great for highlighting, something like uh, 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 Diamine Yellow would work really good as a highlighter. Another ink that uh, you might be surprised at that really works well as a highlighter would be something like a very light uh, green ink. So this is a J. Herban Vert Pre, works really, really well um, uh, as, a, as a highlighter. Um, and I've done it, this, I've used that in the past, the same thing, I filled up a Platinum Preppy and uh, hi highlighter with it. So, you know, check out um, uh, your ink collection. You may already have uh, one or two inks that were great as a highlighter, or you can get, like I said, you can get yourself um, something like Noodles Firefly. Noodles actually makes a couple, this was their original, I believe, highlighter ink. I think they make a couple of different colors. I think they make now some blues and greens. Uh, that work as highlighter inks as well. But anyway, that is that. Is that. Um, well, 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 I think we pretty much have come to the end of this video. Before I say goodbye, I do want to remind everybody to please like, share, comment, and subscribe that would all be very much appreciated and as always until we see each other again have a great day bye bye